Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the drawing of a budget constraint where we have a labour leisure trade-off model and when we have some non-labour income. So here's my question, we are asked, Mary gets an allowance of $100 a day from her benevolent grandmother. After taking away time for sleeping, Mary has 16 hours of which she can either work or engage in leisure. When she does work, Mary's wage is $25 per hour, we're asked to draw Mary's daily budget constraint. Now with these sorts of questions, when we draw out our axes, it's always going to be our level of consumption. That will be the variable C on the vertical axis. And we'll have the level of leisure on the horizontal axis. That will be big L. Now we should define some notation. I've already spoken about consumption C and big L for leisure. Those are our two choice variables. That's what Mary is choosing between. We also should write down here big T. T will be the total amount of time in the day that Mary has with which she can either work or engage in leisure. So that's 16 for Mary. I'll also put little h here. This will be the number of hours engaged in paid work. And actually this variable changes, but it's defined by L, the amount of leisure that Mary chooses. So when Mary chooses L, she essentially chooses H as well. So formally T, that's the total amount of time that we have, will be either used to work, so that's little h, or engage in leisure, which is big L, so T is equal to H plus L. And that means that H is equal to big T minus big L. So the total hours that Mary works is equal to the total time available minus the amount of leisure that she engages in. So easy, and that will be useful for us later, that equation. Now let's call the amount of non-labor income that Mary has V, and for Mary that's equal to 100, that's what grandmother gives her. And let's call the wage rate W, which is 25 for Mary from the question again. We can then start writing our budget constraint. Now there is no savings here, so Mary will use all of her income to consume. So C, consumption, will be equal to all of the income that Mary gets from working, plus any non-labor income. Now the total income that Mary gets from working will be equal to the wage rate W multiplied by how many hours that she actually works, which will be H, and we add to that our non-labor income V. Now it is useful to have our consumption as a function of L, which is leisure, that's the variable on our horizontal axis. And then our equation will illustrate the trade-off that Mary is facing. So we're going to go back to this equation here and we're going to substitute H is equal to big T minus L in our consumption equation. So C is equal to W open brackets T minus L plus V. Let's open up the brackets and we get C is equal to W times big T minus W times big L plus V. What I'm going to do then is just join these terms together. So C is equal to W times T plus V minus W times L. And I've separated those first two terms out because leisure, big L, is our horizontal axis variable and these other terms are all constants. So we can substitute those values in and we get a nice equation of the line. So C is equal to, well, W, little w, our wage is 25 and we know that big T is 16 and we know that V is 100 and we minus W, which we said was 25 and L. So I get 400, that's 16 times 25, plus 100 minus 25 L, and that all reduces to 500 minus 25 L. So I've constructed the equation of our budget constraint, kind of, there is a qualification here, I'll explain in a second. Before we get to the, that, more generally, we know because Mary is trading off between consumption and, and leisure, we know that there will be a downward sloping orientation to the budget constraint. So up here, there'll be high levels of consumption and that corresponds to low levels of leisure, right? Because in order to consume a lot, Mary has to work more. So she has low levels of leisure. Down here will be high levels of leisure, but she isn't working a lot, so her consumption will be lower. So we have this downward orientation to our budget constraint, and you can see the nature of that downward orientation with reference to this negative sign on our L variable as well too. 
The consumption axis intercept then will be up here and corresponds to when leisure L is equal to zero. And at this point, Mary is using all of her time to work. So L is equal to zero. We can substitute that into our equation and we get C is equal to 500. Now you can see where this figure comes from. It comes from here is probably the best best way to think about it. This is the maximum income that Mary can get. She's working all 16 hours. So 16 times 25 plus all of the non-labor income she has as well. That's all equal to 500. Now we can turn our attention next to the horizontal axes. We know at most Mary can engage in 16 hours of leisure. So I'll mark that there. And if we're here, Mary's consumption will be equal to 100. That's the income that she gets from grandma. So actually we have this point here where we know will be on our budget constraint. And this is actually what we call our endowment point or Mary's endowment point. That's what she's endowed with. We can confirm this algebraically. If we substitute L is equal to 16 into our equation, we get 100. Now, L is equal to 16, however, is the maximum level of leisure possible. So our budget constraint will actually end abruptly at this point. And the whole thing will look like this. We'll have a downward sloping section and then an abrupt stop and then a line down to 16. The slope of this section up here is equal to the negative of the wage, so negative 25. Again, we can see that on our budget equation. We have negative 25 in front of the L. And intuitively, just to give an interpretation of, of what's happening here, if it's not clear, let's say Mary has no leisure. So she's up here and she's consuming $500 worth of consumption goods. If she increases her leisure by one hour, she works one hour less and so she loses $25. So she loses $25 worth of consumption. So that's where that slope comes from in terms of an intuitive explanation of what's going on. And as we move to the left, as leisure increases, we just continue the same logic. Our slope is constant at negative 25. For every additional hour of leisure that Mary engages in, she works one less hour, so loses $25 worth of consumption because her wage is equal to 25. This stops, however, when leisure is equal to 16 because this is her maximum, this is her time constraint. And so that's where the budget constraint becomes perfectly vertical. Now I should say, once you get used to these sort of problems, you can draw all of this without any algebra, though you probably will need algebra in your exams if you wanna get full marks. So if you wanted to do it kind of rough and quickly, the consumption axis intercept up here is just the maximum consumption possible. So just think if your agent spends all of their time working, that will be the wage times the maximum amount of time the person has, plus any non-labor income. That will be the consumption axis intercept. Then our horizontal axis number will be equal to big T, the amount of time that they have. And the budget constraint will be perfectly vertical up to the level of non-labor income that they have. If they have any, join all that up and you've got your budget constraint for your labor leisure model if you have any non-labor income. So you can do it without the equations. It's really all just practice. So practice on and you'll get really good at it, um, I promise. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope that you guys are doing well. Have a good one.